Pamela Anderson get seen more for this than for this. We can quite clearly see, right? And the show that's out now about her and Tommy, like, she didn't want it, right? Like, neither did Tommy. <laughs> she's having to relive a traumatic time in her life where she's reduced to being a sex object once again. And also, thank you very much for voting on Instagram for the Pamela Anderson look for me to recreate. This is how I wish my makeup could have looked in high school, not gonna lie. I do also really want to preface this by saying, like, if you think that this series is exploiting people in any way, like, I want you to, like, let me know because the whole intention with making these videos is to humanize people that have been dehumanized and be as respectful as possible and get like the full picture so honestly like if you think that what i'm doing here is actually causing harm i'm more than happy to leave this series behind because i never want to be part of like someone's pain that's never what i want i just wanted to preface this by saying that so let's get into it I wanted to create this video to talk about her whole work and her as a whole person instead of like just focusing on this one aspect that she's known for um, because it keeps getting brought up as like kind of like this ghost that will just never leave her um, because we love to reduce women to like whatever conquest, right? Mm societal issue there it's great especially the fact that this was actually stolen they made no money off it they didn't want anyone to actually use it um so yeah it's great that we've got a show going over the most exploitative part of her life as opposed to talking about her many other things so that's why i want us to talk about the many other things I must have actually by this time watched at least 50 of the interviews that I found of her online and she gets reduced down to like this sex object all the time. When she's on men's shows, it's probably the worst. Um, I'm just gonna put out, here's a little compilation for you. Bring love into your life or how's it? Yeah. It's very working. close to you right now. <laughs> Wanna um, try it? Okay, so let's just try that then. All right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> so close yet so far. Clear my passageway. <laughs> Come on, it's just a cold sore. <laughs> All right. What? Oh, forget it. Oh, honey. Oh my, oh, God. my God. This is the best you ever looked. This is the best you ever looked. Let's freeze this moment in time. It's too much for me. Let me look at you. You You're are such partying. You love playing the sex kitten. Look how good you look. Oh Let me see how you look. Let me take a look. I'm, I'm going to look at you. Look at those legs. That's some outfit. Let me see your shoes. I can't see. And the pink panties are working for me too. Whoa! With the pink shoes. Hey now. It's a green teddy. Hey I'm watching my book. This yeah. day has been stressful until I got here. Yeah. Did you reduce the size of your breasts? No. A little bit. No. Because they look they look more natural now. Oh. I thought you had gone a little big for a while. No. A little big. What are those? Are those settled in? Are they silicone or saline? I don't know. Yes, you do. I think they're, well, saline, the safer one, whatever that is. Saline. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Under the muscle? Um, I think it's half and half. Half and half? Yeah. That's like the, so that doesn't stick out weird. They look good. Oh, thank you. Do they feel natural? Yeah. Um, she gets treated about as badly as Anna Nicole Smith, but Anna Nicole Smith actually got another label, um, even though it was an inaccurate one, for being a gold digger. Um, whereas Pamela Anderson has many other labels that go along with her, which are a little bit more flattering because we apparently don't think that Charlie XCX work is worthwhile, but that is another topic for another day. If you've seen any of these videos before, you know this is not a total biography of her life. This because you've got Wikipedia, she's got her own blog, like, honestly, you can find out, like, literally a timeline of everything, um, including, of course, like, around the topic that she doesn't want anyone talking about, the video, so this is not focusing on the video and the inaccuracies of stuff because, like, again, this is not what she wanted, so I'm, I always try to be very aware of what, like, people actually want, and it's definitely not that, okay? I also incorporate my own opinions into this, and I sadly also have some issues with Pamela that I really want to talk about, and of course we're going to be talking about that at the end, because I think it's very important to have a holistic view. I also need to put in here a bit of a trigger warning because if you know anything about Pamela's life, like you know that she's dealt with miscarriage, with SA, with grape, um, and with abuse. So, like, 
that's in this. It's not the key focus, but I just want you to be prepared. Last week, my video on Galentine's Day is a lot lighter, a lot fluffier if you want to watch that instead. Also, next week I'm having a week off because I'm working on the Big 2000s video and I'm also getting my booster jab next weekend. And from the way I reacted to my second one, I'm kind of anticipating I'll need a couple of days off. So we're creating this look. My bone structure is not like Pamela's at all, I wish. So I've just redone the makeup. But yeah, I've tried. I've really tried my best. Anyway, let's get right on into it. I know it was kind of a long intro. Thank you for sitting through that. It's really hot right now. So if my face does melt during the filming of this, um, what can I do? I can't have my windows open because the cicadas all the time. So let's talk about her life and career, shall we? So she got very famously discovered in 1989, which I'm sure that you know all about. She was at a BC Lions game. Obviously she was born in Canada, which you will know. And she was wearing a Labatt's t-shirt. And then that image of her got blasted on the Jumbotron. And then they were like, oh, we can use her. So Labatt's obviously reached out to her and they wanted her to be a spokesmodel. And then she got a call from none other than Hugh Hefner, who wanted her to go and suddenly be a cover girl on um, his little magazine called Playboy, which is like a remarkable fate for someone in 1989 to go from Canada, an unknown person from Canada, down to LA to go and pose for a, a cover of Playboy was an absolutely massive deal and like people would fight over being able to do this. Then in 1990 she got voted as Playmate of the Year and she was centerfold and then she decided to get her first breast augmentation. Obviously like this has been like an ongoing thing. Kind of like the same like with Dolly, how she's just not ashamed of the fact that she's had plastic surgery, which is a good thing, honestly, especially when people have been so shamed for it for such a long time. But of course, being involved like, with any line of like Charlie XCX work, you get judged an awful lot as a woman, um, which still definitely happened to Pam. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so she officially moved down from Canada, and she's a naturalized, like, United States citizen as well, which happened, like, obviously down the line. She played Lisa on Tool Time, a show which I own too many DVDs of, <laughs> because that was, uh, like, a comfort show for me as a kid. But then she went on to Baywatch from 1992 to 1997, uh, which is probably, like, the show which everyone knows her for, in particular if you were a male growing up <laughs> at the time. You probably had her poster on your wall above your bed and in places I don't want to think about. Then in 1994 she was in the movie called Raw Justice, which is available on YouTube. I tried to watch it. The music is so distracting. And then I was like, oh, where is she? Um, yeah, so... Kind of in a similar vein to what happened to Anna Nicole Smith, this is softcore, and um, any clips I'm showing you right now, I had to very carefully select. There's not much of her in clothes in this movie. And of course the comment section is full of timestamps for when you can see particular parts of her. If you want to know like, the cinematic prowess that is this movie. It was also in 1994 that she met her future husband and father of her children, um, but we'll talk about that later. And she famously did the movie called Barb Wire, which she got a real tattoo for because she really didn't want to like have to sit in the makeup chair like every day to get like this fake tattoo done, uh, which she did regret and she got that removed I believe in 2016. Now it was during this time that many people were lying about her as well, saying that she was on drugs and doing all sorts of stuff, when actually she suffered from a miscarriage and she also dealt with endometriosis, so um, people were like trying to spin all these stories at the time, it was incredibly false, and of course like this is the thing that plagued Pamela her whole life, is people lying about her in the press, like what happens to so many stars that we've talked about in this series. When she was actually successfully pregnant, Baywatch, um, they really wanted to be like, uh, when are you coming back? Like, we want to get on with work, and she's like, oh my gosh, I haven't even had the baby yet, and I want to be able to be a mother, and it's just like, work, 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 because like, when are you gonna snap your body back? And all that other really toxic stuff that of course just happened to her. <laughs> She's appeared on a wide number of shows, pantomimes, like she's written books, she's done, basically like this woman has done it all. And she often actually pokes fun at her tabloid image as well. Now speaking of interviews, this woman has done so many interviews it's actually been really really hard to try and keep up with. A lot of the ones from the 90s are in like very poor quality. I will have a whole bunch linked down below for you because you know like with these I do like to get it from the person's mouth and because she's got a blog as well that's been incredibly helpful being able to get like her own views on things too. She's also been very candid in her interviews and like has grown like to be less afraid of speaking up as well. You're supposed to be my friend, my friend, and I you're like, you, you know, jump on the bandwagon, everyone's making fun of us and... Making fun? What, yeah, what are you I talking know. about? You know, making fun. I, I maybe told one little joke or something. One? Tommy's been taping them. I've got it here. 
What do you have? Tommy, Pamela Lee, Pamela Lee, Pamela Lee, and Tommy Lee, Pamela Lee, and Tommy, Pamela, and Tommy Lee, Pamela, and Tommy Lee, Pamela Lee, Pamela Lee, Tommy, and Pamela Lee, Tommy, and Pamela Lee, Pamela, and Tommy Lee, Pamela, and Tommy Lee. Maybe. Maybe one or two. Did you have a favorite? It's not funny. It's not funny. This is devastating to us. It is? It, it is. is, it is. Like, I especially noticed this change after the 2000s where she's just like, you know what, I'm just gonna talk about stuff because this is when um, she'd become more involved in activism. She's like, mm, actually, you know what? I'm actually just gonna say this important stuff, okay? <sighs> Except for the fact that the tape gets brought up time and again in all of these interviews. And it's like, I can very clearly see her squirm and not want to talk about it. Like, she openly says, oh, I've never watched it, I don't want to. Um, and explains the fact that it was stolen, that it makes her really uncomfortable. And then, like, people are just saying, like, oh, but you look really good in it, though. Um, I've watched it. And just kind of, like, bragging to her that they've seen this private moment of her life that she didn't want anyone to ever see, other than, like, her and her husband. Because it, it was private. Like, they had it stored away. So secure and so private. And, of course, it had a way more negative impact on her than it did on Tommy Lee because... Um, slut shaming is an absolute thing and it's 100% okay, of course, like, for people that have made, like, this intimate thing for themselves, um, when that gets leaked, it means that they're the, <laughs> you as the woman become the whore, you know? Um, I've made a whole video on MWD, um, and honestly talking about this has made me really want to talk about objectification, which we'll talk about later. But, you know, like, she's had to spend so much time, like, joking it off and stuff, because the worst thing that any woman can be deemed as as being a difficult woman, so she's had to like really fight against that. I feel for her so much with this tape, especially with this show as well, like I think it's just disgusting. All I'm gonna say is that Tommy Lee was already established and he's a rock star, so you've got a rock star image to keep up. Pamela, if she wanted to be able to gain le legitimacy, um, this would just ruin her. So yeah, and it's haunted her and is still haunting her, like 25 years later. Great. Like, whilst her and Tommy Lee were together, they used to throw the wildest parties, which she would, like, host, and they were just wild. Um, like, she's always been very sex positive, which is a great thing to see, because so many women get absolutely shamed for having any sexual thought in this very Puritan sort of way, especially for America. Like, she's done so much charity work that it's actually ridiculous trying to keep up with how much she's actually done. But no, 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 no. Always have to bring it back to the Charlie XCX tape, right? The one that people stole and have profited off. Oh, but then you can say that Paris Hilton did the same thing. It's like, no, that one was stolen too. Wasn't that one actually revenge? I think that one was revenge. Not good all round. She's also produced her own TV show called Stacked, which I did watch a couple of episodes of because it's on YouTube. Um, it's a bit too early 2000s humour for me, but you can watch a whole bunch of those episodes if you want. There was also the show called VIP. And then you've also got movies like The Likes of Borat, where she was like fake kidnapped in it. Yes, it was a staged event. They did that twice. Um, and on the second one, the one that was actually that ended up in the movie because on the first one people didn't really react too strongly so Sasha Baron Cohen was like uh what kind of fans are these um but yeah in the second one she actually like broke a little piece of her jaw off I believe it was um during that stunt and that was when Kid Rock uh also decided to divorce her um apparently shouting all sorts of terrible things at her like the w word like Colin Carrot slut um so yeah but also um, I had a quick little Google of him. It seems like he's an anti-masker and is against, like, I don't know, public safety during a plague. So, personally, I'd say, Pam, you're way better off single, sweetie. Plus, it's Kid Rock. Oh, she's also done Dance with the Stars. Like, heck, she was even on Big Brother for, like, three days. <laughs> but, like, all of that work absolutely does pale in comparison to the charity work that she's done. Gosh, having your eyebrows much higher really gives you more lid space, doesn't it? Wow. So I'm going to talk about her childhood now, and please skip ahead to this timestamp. It will also be, obviously, timestamped um, if you can't handle the topics that we talked about before, because this is where a lot of the bad stuff really did happen for Pam. Now Pam's got great admiration for her mother and other female figures in her life however when she was a child like her babysitter molested her from the age of 6 to 10 and her babysitter was actually female as well. Then at the age of 12 she was raped by a 25 year old man who's just scot-free of course and then when she was 14 her boyfriend and six of his friends decided to gang her um but the thing is that she couldn't go and talk to her mum about it because her mum was already working two waitresses jobs her father was an alcoholic and she just didn't want to like 
cause any more problems so she just kept it to herself and honestly like what a horrible child i i can't actually imagine what it would have been like to have to go through that and then not be able to tell anyone or talk to anyone about it i feel so sorry for her that any of that stuff happened let alone all three of those things happened like she talked about this in 2014 at the Cannes festival i am really glad that she spoke out and shared her story even though obviously the statute of limitations would have been well gone um, because it helps other people actually get the courage to speak up themselves about stuff that's happened to them too the reason i'm bringing up any of this to begin with is because it kind of links in with some stuff which i'll talk later on down the track um which i've got a bit of an issue with in all honesty also if any of that was triggering i've got some resources for you down below as well like i don't want anyone to ever feel like helpless or hopeless um, by going through any of that because it's not your fault i want you to know that a romantic at heart next chapter moving on yes her and tommy did get married after only four days and yes he did actually follow her to mexico um and allegedly brought 400 dollars worth of toys with him. A healthy consensual sex life is a good thing, okay? I'm not gonna shade anyone on that. Now, their relationship wasn't great, like there were a lot of ups, but there were also a lot of downs. They had a lot of wild parties, and obviously it sadly ended with him rightly going to jail after assaulting her. Uh, but they did have two sons together, Brandon and Dylan, and Tommy is also the reason that she actually got hepatitis C, because they shared tattoo needles. She got cured of it in 2015. But she's been very, very passionate about that cause. Making sure that people are aware of what they've got, aware of like their health and stuff and being honest with others about that. I just got to say, I really do appreciate her parenting style because she's one of the celebrities that like before it was cool to do so, absolutely wanted to hide her children from the press, from the red carpets. She never wanted to take them down any red carpets. She wanted to like really allow them to like ground themselves and have a childhood, which I think is a fantastic thing. And even though like her and Tommy didn't like work together like in a relationship, like from what she says, they've actually worked together well as parents, which is honestly so good because they've been able to keep those two kids very grounded and allowed them to like follow the dreams that they want to follow as opposed to like what the parents want them to follow and of course like both of them have had to overcome their own stereotypes because i'm sure can you imagine going to a parent teacher thing when you've got like him covered in tattoos and chains and stuff rocking up literally a rock star and her where people think of her as like a object like people would have been casting so much doubt over them and the fact that they've been able to be like such incredible parents like kind of proves all of these stereotypes wrong i mean like yes everyone talks about her love life all the time like yes she's married a lot yes she's got divorced a lot yes she's had like heartbreaks and people do terrible things to her but she's still an absolute romantic at heart and she still believes in love despite all of this stuff. And it's also really good to see like she's a representation for still being empowered to be sexually liberated even as a mum because it's there, there is this weird misconception that as soon as you've had a child you're not allowed to be sexy anymore. So I think that that is incredibly progressive and good of her. And despite all of this stuff that she's been through she still holds out hope even today at the age of 54 for a good like wholesome, fulfilling relationship, which I think is incredibly hopeful and I think that that should be applauded. If I'd been through half the stuff that she'd been through, I would be the most bitter, twisted person. Happy to be a parody. As you said, were pretty rough. You had a health scare, a couple of marriages, you had an annulment, a divorce. Yeah, the marriages Are were things... the health scare. Yeah. <laughs> so Pamela kind of puts herself out there as a mockery of herself, like almost disarming people because she'll say the joke first, a little bit in the way that Dolly Parton does it, but like more. <laughs> By playing this approach, she keeps the image of her alive in order to be able to actually highlight the things that she wants to talk about. Sorry, that was my shoulder clicking. That was very loud. So she's quite happy to parody herself. And she's also still a very fun-loving girl. But by doing this, she's able to kind of like just weasel her way in, get people to want to talk about her love life and stuff. And then she's like, okay, uh, Julian Assange, okay, environmental damage, okay, all of this other stuff that people should really be talking about, you know. She's able to get her foot in the door by being so out there and dramatic that she's able to platform the things that she wants to talk about. Like, I've seen so many people in comment sections being really surprised by how smart she is and like, oh, it was my fault for like prejudging her and not thinking that she was intelligent. It's like, yeah, actually that, that kind of is your fault for prejudging people. Like that's happened to me a lot in life because I've liked a lot of very feminine sort of things. So people are like, oh, you're an idiot. It's like, okay. Well, I mean, like, it's just their loss, right? <laughs> like, there were other people that absolutely did use this to their advantage as well, like Marilyn and Anna Nicole Smith, but I think that 
well one she's lived a longer life so she's been able to actually turn things around past the age of 36 she's been able to actually leverage this in a way that really does work for her there are plenty of people that of course like want to keep her in like this 90s sort of box where they only focus on like how she looked in the 90s like when she was in her 20s and like this whole obsession with youth and being a sex object and all of that other stuff. But like not only can she be that, but she can actually be an incredibly smart and passionate person as well. In a way that people don't naturally think could happen because they've always got like this stereotype of like what a blonde with big boobs is like, you know? Also can I just say it doesn't matter if someone isn't like smart enough for you or fit into like all of the boxes that you expect them to. People shouldn't have to tick arbitrary boxes in order to be able to be worthwhile. It's like people have different skills in different areas. Whether or not she was like incredibly smart it shouldn't mean that her opinion isn't valid. I really don't like this whole thing of like everyone has to be like a 10 and this and that and that. I it's just really mean. <laughs> Honestly, if anything, this reflects more on our society, the fact that we're more willing to give a symbol airtime as opposed to like experts. <laughs> or Joe Rogan airtime, can I just say? She gets more access than politicians in some cases. Like, she's able to just talk to Vladimir Putin, you know? This is why I'm so glad that she's been trying to use her platform for good, which I think is really, really important and to be commended. The perks of being a symbol for activism. So Pamela knows that she is sexy. She knows that she's a sex symbol. She loves this fact and actually embraces it too. More so, like I said, because she can use this image and celebrity to get the places that she wants to go to and get the messages out there that she wants to get out there. It's like you've got this Trojan horse and she's like, look at this pretty packaging. Well, bam, politics, you know? <laughs> because people always want to talk about her personal life and all this other stuff because there's always stuff that's happening with Pamela Anderson. It means that she's kind of always got an in to be able to actually be like, mm, okay, so I want to talk about this stuff too. And a lot of the interviewers, like especially Piers Morgan, um, just want to be able to steer her back to the topic of like her love life and stuff. And she's like, mm, okay, well, I want to talk about this stuff instead. And so she's gotten very good at being able to like steer the conversation in the way that she wants it to go. It was really more from the late 90s onwards that she got even more involved with charities. She was kind of involved with them before, but then she got really involved with them after that point. She went fully vegan and got more interested in like the wider issues of the world, which I think is great, honestly. And sadly, now we have to talk about Peter. So I'm a vegan who doesn't like Peter, okay? Like people point out the hypocrisy all the time of them, but at the same time, if you're still eating animals, um, I don't really think you've got much of a moral high ground to stand on, okay? When she found out the truth behind the Ugg boots that she made famous on Baywatch, she was horrified, absolutely horrified, and has since made vegan Ugg boots. When disaster struck at New Orleans, not only did she donate money, but then she also rescued 50 dogs and 30 cats and adopted them all, desexed them, and got them all adopted out, like all of them. Waves for Water is another charity that she's really involved in, like has been for many years at this point. It's this very simple device that you can just plug into like the buckets that are very easily available in third world countries and it fully filters the water that is actually like undrinkable. So then they're able to actually drink the water because getting clean drinking water around the world, <laughs> not as easy as what it is for you and me. Because if you're watching this video, you've probably got clean and easy access to water. And these were like $50. So then people, when they're going traveling or something, they could easily take them with them and drop them off at like a church or somewhere that does like community work. So then that can actually get to where it needs to go. And it can look after like, what is it, a hundred people? She also raised a bunch of money for Haiti, like by doing a marathon. She was Max Viva Glam Girl in 2004. Now, I did mention before that she was positive for hepatitis C, and 100% of the proceeds to Viva Glam um, actually goes towards, like, Max AIDS fund. So she was really, really passionate about that, and the whole messaging, like I said, around getting tested and making sure that you knew where you stood, like, health-wise, that was the whole messaging behind that. Um, and then when she found out, from Peter that Mac, which is owned by Estee Lauder, which I have a whole two videos on actually, all about uh, my problems with them, which is why I wouldn't buy from them to begin with. Like that Mac was actually selling in mainland China and in order to be able to sell in mainland China, like physically in stores in mainland China, um, animal testing has to happen. Like she was really horrified by that. And because she was friends with the people at Estee Lauder, like she was writing to them like, um, what the hell? <laughs> Why are you doing this? I'm still glad that she spoke up about it, even though it was with Peter. She's a strong supporter of Sea Shepherd. Same. Like honestly, she's aligned with so many charities. It's actually hard to list out all of the individual things that she's done for charities because it really is 
so much and she's constantly trying to raise awareness for them. Around about the past five years it's really cranked up on the environmentalism which we love to see. She's got a very holistic sort of approach of like many things that she's interested in. It's not just like animals and um, because people tend to just say it's just animals like i said before she's met with vladimir putin and got them to stop buying seals um, as well which is great like and i believe that she got him to stop whaling as well was that what it was uh, honestly like i said there is just so much that this woman has done it's, it's actually quite amazing the fact that she's been able to like talk with such influential leaders around the world and get taken seriously obviously she has to heavily lean on the experts but I'm glad that she's still trying to do something with the platform that she has. She's also created vegan handbags and shoes and done a whole bunch of stuff around clothing and lots around anti-fur, like, like sending faux fur things to people like Kim Kardashian. Not that capitalism is going to save the world, okay? I just want to reiterate that fact. It's not going to save us. It's going to destroy us, if anything. Even with like these handbags and stuff, I do not know the conditions of the workers that are actually making this stuff. Speaking of politics, I can't make a video about Pamela Anderson without talking about Julian Assange, now can I? She has a strong and vocal support for WikiLeaks, um, and in particular Julian Assange, and, is and she's been speaking up for him for many years because she got connected with him because she wanted to know how to do activism better, and so they've got a long-lasting friendship from this. In case you don't know about WikiLeaks, it's kind of like a whistleblower, exposing internal government documents about war crimes and all sorts of terrible stuff that's happened. If you are one of my many American subscribers, because most of you are from there, um, you'll probably remember this from the 2016 election with Hillary's emails. So they were responsible for sharing that. There was a lot of criticism around this as well because obviously there's ties with Russia around this, but then also people were mad about the fact that, okay, so you unleash this stuff on Hillary, but then why not anything on Trump? And I've got a little bit of a hot take on this, which you may not agree with, but people knew about the terrible stuff that Trump did. Like, the videos were out there, grab, grab her by the all this other stuff, like his victims had come forward, like, it was known, the stuff that Trump had done. What else could they uncover? His tax evasion? Like, to the right-leaning conservatives that he was aiming for, tax evasion seemed like a medal. Like, that seemed to be a good thing. So I don't really know what else they could have really exposed on him because people were so okay with the fact that he'd been a terrible person for so many years. So, yeah, I, I don't know what else they could have found on him to be able to actually deter people from voting for him. And of course it's worthwhile saying as well that Hillary actually did those things, which she shouldn't have done as well. Like, I didn't like any of them, um, and I know that Pamela didn't either, but like, I'd have still rather have Hillary than Trump, right? WikiLeaks have exposed many different war crimes from many different governments, and to America they're kind of seen as like an enemy of the state, because they're letting out state secrets, um, like, how they've killed many civilians um, on purpose. And then of course just trying to do many different cover-ups like WikiLeaks has done so much. Honestly, even the Wikipedia page on it is so ridiculously long. I'll just have it linked down below for you. And honestly, I'm not well versed enough in all of this stuff to be able to talk to you about it because it is a whole separate like three videos in itself. Um, all I'm gonna say is like, I believe in freedom of the press and I believe that people should be held accountable for the actions that they've done uh, when it comes to literal war crimes, uh, which I don't think is all that controversial of a thing to say. Um, so even though I've got some certain problems with Julian, I do agree that it's better to actually have like this stuff out and known um, as opposed to like the censorship of it, if that makes sense. So in terms of like his supporters versus the people that don't support him, you can definitely tell the people who don't support him, you know the reasons why they don't support him. And so you can kind of gauge quite a bit from that. This is on to my next issue. Sorry. Feminism hasn't gone too far. You're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> now nobody is free from criticism. Not myself, not the Queen, not even Pamela. Um, yeah, this is where I... Yeah, I don't feel too great about this. So after Me Too happened, um, she actually was against the women that came forward. I can go too far. I'm a feminist, but I think that this third wave feminism is, is a bore. I think it paralyzes men. I think that this Me Too movement is a bit too much for me. I'm sorry, I'll probably get killed for saying that. You will. My mother taught me, don't go to a hotel with a stranger. If someone answers the door in a bathrobe and it's supposed to be a business meeting, maybe I should go with somebody else. You're talking you know. about Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. 
I think that some things are just common sense. Or if you go in, get the job. <laughs> so you shouldn't wear certain things, you shouldn't go certain places. Like, you need to be more aware of yourself and take better care of yourself. Um, it's, it's your fault, basically. Um, so that's where I've got a lot of issues because what does this sound like to you? Because that sounds an awful lot like victim blaming to me. Um, I'm not here for that BS, okay? I'm really not. The responsibility should not lie with the victim. It's, it's the same as saying someone who's crossing a road, a car speeds up and swerves directly to purposefully hit them. Saying that it was a person's fault for crossing the road and it's like, the, the other person sped up and swerved in order to hit them. Who's that? Oh, so, so the person walking's at fault? I don't... no. <laughs> no. <laughs> not on this channel. If you... If you're here with that sort of opinion, I really do want you to step back a little bit. Um, because it doesn't matter what someone's wearing. A, a victim is a victim. I'm sorry. Why is, why is everything put on typically the female being at fault here when they're not the one that was doing the thing, okay? Okay, great. Doesn't matter if they're drunk or whatever. It doesn't... No. Sorry, I was getting too heated. I'll just do my lashes and then we'll talk again, okay? So the thing is, in the many interviews that I've seen, like I said before, when she talks about this issue, I have a look at the comments because that's what I always do. And in the comments, everyone is saying, oh, she's speaking the truth, she's saying all the right things, why can't more women think like this? Because she's got such a huge platform and because she looks the way that she does, her, like, a very sexy person saying it's the victim's fault. You see, you see the issue here? Because, like, like I said before, the stuff that happened to her in childhood, I'm like, how can you, how can you be thinking like this? And just the fact that everyone's agreeing with it, because she's got such a huge platform, it's just incredibly disappointing to see. She says that she's a feminist, but she's against third wave feminism, saying it's like taking things too far. Like, it takes the feminine out of feminism. I'm sorry, I'm a feminist, you can, I'm a third wave feminist, you'd even say. You can see I'm very feminine, very happily feminine. So she hates this so much that she's been writing a book on it. We want them to still be men, to be chivalrous. We don't want to be too crazy. This third wave feminism, I'm not really a fan of that, but I am a feminist. I believe in all the good things that feminism has, but I'm going to write a fourth book called Saving Feminism from Feminists. I'm working on it. <laughs> the rage is just boiling. Yeah, this is where I really got a problem because she employs like what about is some arguments which really have no backbone to them. When people are trying to point out that she was being objectified in Playboy along with others, she's like, well we did that of our own choice. Like we weren't forced into anything. It's like when you take into consideration the complete power imbalance and the structure around it um, and the fact that it was a well-known fact that if you got into Playboy, your career could skyrocket and the fact that she wanted to be able to get somewhere and the only way to do that is by objectifying yourself to like what men wanted. There's, there's a big power balance at play. Plus, we all know now the stuff that really happened in that mansion and the stuff that the girls had to do um, to be able to like have a career and because Hugh Hefner was so well connected all the power was with the men and the women had to do what was asked, told um, of them in order to be able to like, I don't know, not be completely blacklisted and to be able to have the career that they desperately wanted. I'm not saying that all of them dealt with like the atrocities but I'm saying that enough atrocities absolutely happened and the contracts that were in place like we know about that stuff now. Um, but Pamela still, to this day, holds Hugh Hefner in very high regard, saying that when she went to the Playboy Mansion, it was like a university for her, because she learned so much there. Oh, and also, um, when the Playboy Mansion came out with, like, movers and stuff, which heavily featured her, guess what she earned from it? Nothing. Imagine that, um, all of the work that she did, she wasn't paid for, but she still doesn't consider it to be exploitive. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, objectification is a complex issue, and to follow up on my MWD, like Madonna Hall complex video, I actually want to do a separate video on objectification and like female empowerment and all of that other stuff because it's a big topic and I really want to talk about it. Probably only be able to do that in April, honestly, because 
my list is too big. <laughs> the way that she's trying to put it is the fact that we're not allowed to be sexy and not allowed to be feminine anymore because of third wave feminism, when actually third wave feminism is intersectional. It's much more inclusive than what second wave feminism was because that was very much like propelled for white women. It wasn't an intersectional movement. Yeah, and plus she's also concerned because she's got two boys and she's worried about them getting false accusations made about them like what happened with Julian apparently even though um, the statute of limitations ran out on that and it was a complete sort of like international political fumble around him actually having to go to court and face this stuff. So his victims, um, even though it's all alleged, um, his victims never actually, I don't know, got any closure or anything so they're still dealing with that trauma. Um, yeah, this is Julian Assange that I'm on about, by the way. Um, yeah, so you can, you can clearly see where I've got some very big issues here, right? But it's like she's also trying to do this to preemptively protect her boys if they do something bad to a girl. And I'm like, can't they just be taught about consent? I don't know. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> she's also really against um, online now I do understand from the perspective of the fact that her video was stolen which was a private video which should never have happened same thing happened to Paris in fact but she's saying that that's the thing that's ruining relationships now and she's got a real vendetta against it and also links it in with gaming with saying that that's ruining relationships and it's like actually no she says it doesn't show real love it's setting unrealistic expectations and is a dangerous place with a lot of exploitation now I can't disagree with those things but I also would say those things were happening at Playboy already, which she was partaking in. Like, I'm also not saying that everyone is forced into sex work. Like, I'm not saying that everyone at the Playboy mansion was forced into it. I'm not saying that at all. I don't want people to take that away from this. And also, back then, porn fully existed. It's just the fact that we've got the joys and terrors of the internet with the fact that um, it's so easily accessible to people all of the varieties that it comes in, you know? Whereas you could also argue that actually having OnlyFans and being able to do that stuff on your terms is a lot more empowering um, because you're able to actually profit off the things that people were, um, I don't know, selling as revenge stuff to begin with, you know? It's a complex issue and I can't really cover it all now, uh, but I, I don't really agree with her stance on this and the whole third wave feminism is bad thing, okay? So Julian Assange is against feminism too, to not put him in the total clear here. He said that Sweden is the Saudi Arabia of feminism. So racist and sexist. Great. So let's talk controversy and hypocrisy, shall we? In 2019, for Halloween, she dressed up in a Native American headdress um, and posted this to Twitter. Um, when people called her out for cultural appropriation, she didn't apologize, she didn't face into it or anything. Instead she sent, she posted a link to, what was it? The Logic of Cultural Appropriation. Um, also, side note, I'm sorry, um, isn't this a Native American headdress with, made with real feathers? Posted by Peter's honorary chairman or director, um, whatever it is that she's got a position of. Um, excuse me? We're really dealing with uh, Peter level hypocrisy here then, okay. Great, good to know. If you've actually seen my Animal Fabrics video, then you already know like what actually happens to get these feathers. Um, so cultural appropriation and <laughs> killing animals. And it's also well known that she's vegan. My issue kind of comes in with the fact that she's actually sharing misinformation, saying that a vegan diet is an aphrodisiac and that eating meat makes you impotent and unhealthy which is not scientifically backed at all. Like, I've got no problem with promoting veganism. What I do have a problem with is spreading lies. I've got a huge issue with that. And so, like I said, as she is vegan, she's got her own, like, clothing line and shoe line and bag line. Like, she's done all of this stuff, which also includes lingerie, which is linked from her own website saying that she's, like, worked with this brand. Um, so I checked it out. So you've got Coco de Mer by Pamela, Ashoka Vegan Bags Collection, and Watermonts Collection, which was a limited edition thing. So this is all linked from her own website. Um, so I went on Coco de Mer, and the first thing I clicked on, which was the handcuffs, they're made of leather, like real leather. And this is linked from Pamela's own website. And so I was like, okay, well let's, maybe this is just like a one-off, so let's go check the other stuff out. So I looked at a teddy. That was made of silk. Nothing about it being vegan silk, it's just silk. And then you've got this kimono, um, pure silk again. Um, why is this linked from her vegan website? That's what I'm not understanding because none of that is vegan. 
Like, she's so loudly anti-fur and so loudly vegan. Like, these are, like, her key causes. So I'm like, you, you see the hypocrisy here? You see why I've got a problem with this? My other problem comes in the, with the fact that, like, she does these interviews and she got shown, like, the clothes beforehand to, like, approve them. But then when I looked at the clothing, um, because it linked to it, of course, like, because this is, like, an editorial where they're all on about, like, her veganism and her activism and all that good stuff, and I, I looked at the clothes. This cozy cardigan that she's wearing here is actually made of mohair. And this Ryan Roche sweater is actually made of cashmere. So I'm 100% here for like secondhand things being made of like literally whatever. I don't care if it's secondhand, like because it's better to like use it as opposed to just throw it away. What I do have a problem with is the fact that this was all for an editorial piece where all of this stuff was purchasable and she was wearing it and marketing it to people. Where, like I said, she's so strongly vegan and I'm like... No, like, she checked the clothes beforehand and approved them beforehand. And if you are such a hu huge spokesperson for this, like, massive, absolutely massive platform, pretty much everyone that's got a TV around the world knows you. I'm really pro her wanting to use her platform well, but, like, her being linked to Peter and then doing stuff like this really bothers me because it's like, if you are so passionate about a cause, know about the cause at least and like act on it in ways that are according to it. If she was made to wear the stuff and she had no choice then I would have a completely different opinion but she she selected them. She said these ones. Yeah okay anyway. So let's come on to my final thoughts before I completely melt. Let me just finish my lips. So Pamela Anderson has honestly achieved a lot in the 54 years that she's had on this planet. Like, there is no denying that. And honestly, I'm convinced that she'll continue to achieve more until she absolutely can no longer go on. The woman has honestly really been through hell from her childhood and then again in her relationships, which is awful and tragic. I'm really amazed that she's been able to be such an inspirational survivor of it. And also just of, like, the sheer magnitude of what she's been able to achieve. Like, honestly, like, I... I could never. I wish. If I could never, let's be honest. I honestly wish that she cut ties with Peter because, like, she has her own platform where she's actually got all the stuff that she needs to be able to actually, like, promote the stuff that she wants to without being linked to Peter. I think that that would be fantastic. And it's one of the other reasons why I'm so pro the scientific consensus because then she would have been sharing, like, this absolute misinformation, which I think is actually more damaging to the cause than anything. Like, whilst veganism is important, like, accessibility is also important, so I would be more saying, like, the pressure on the governments is the part where I would love for her to focus on more since she's already got so many great connections there I think that that would be really important. Like I really do also hope that she reevaluates her stance on feminism as well. I think that she's been terribly misguided by some particular people to make her think like this because it's completely not right, like 100% not. If anything second wave feminism wouldn't be what she wanted because that's where you're meant to get de-sexed more than anything. So third wave should be what she would want, <laughs> even just selfishly for her. Like, I do really admire her courage for being able to speak her mind and speak up to politicians who hold huge power around the world. I think that that is such an admirable thing that she's been really fighting for this, especially over the past 20 odd years. I do wish that we had more celebrities that were as focused on charity and using their platform for good as her. I think that she's a great person to kind of like hold up as like, this is what you could be doing, um, as an, instead of like just on that weird grind of like just gaining more wealth than celebrity. Like, I'm not saying that she's not wealthy, like she's super wealthy. What I'm saying is like, using that platform for better things, I think that she's a great advocate for being able to do that. Even though there's definitely flaws there, every person has flaws and I do think that she'll be able to like get out of them if she just like has a bit of a step back and reevaluates stuff and maybe listens to a few more people. I also wish that more people actually focus on the stuff that she's achieved rather than focusing on her darn lady parts and that stupid tape that literally is a curse to her now. I, I wish that people wouldn't keep holding that over her head and keep on referencing back to her like as literally just a because people are whole people and shouldn't just be seen as being like an object. But hey, if anyone knows the power of it's definitely Pamela Anderson. That's how she's been able to like get to where she is now. So she definitely knows it's themselves and she's used that uh, skill very, very well. <laughs> like you can be 
sexy and empowered and I think that she definitely does show that so there's a lot for us to take away from this um, if you made it all the way to the end please leave the high heeled shoe emoji and the wave emoji because I think it's quite fitting um, but thank you so so much for watching so I'm having to fan myself I'm absolutely melting and dripping right now um, and I hope you love this have a wonderful rest of your day don't forget there's no video next week so there's going to be an even bigger one with the 2000s video and I'll see you then bye Oh my god, there's already sweat dripping down my back. Oh my gosh, it is so hot. It's unreal. It's so sweaty. Ugh. I did heated curlers and everything and it's like I can feel it just sticking to my skin.